Hey guys, how's it going? It's Kara here with another Guardian Tales video. And I figured it's time again for another one of these videos where we're talking about the best heroes here in Guardian Tales. And so before we get into this video, if you can get a like on this video, that'd be awesome. Also subscribe to the channel for more Guardian Tales content. So with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So like last time, when it comes to these characters, I'm weighing in all game modes. I'm weighing in Arena, Coliseum, and PvE slash like raiding content. And I wanna weigh it all because these characters in this game, for most people, it's such a massive investment. You're not gonna be getting multiple characters. Like this is very rare to be able to have all these options here. And so I'm just trying to give advice. I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone that I, I know what it's like to, you, you just have one team or you just have a couple characters that are barely even limit broken yet. And I think that's where most people are in this game. And that's gonna be kind of like my focus when it comes to this because I think as I progress through this game, I'm realizing there's more and more to this game than just Arena and just Coliseum. And finding characters that fit all the criteria there now that I've, you know, more knowledgeable with the game and I know what I'm, it's kind of changing how I look at the game um, going forward. So talk about the top characters here in this game. Probably going to do, it's going to be roughly a top 10, maybe a top 12. So like, uh, there's a lot of really good characters in this game, depending on what kind of content you're looking for or what needs you haven't met yet, if you should be going for certain characters or not. So the first character, I just want to get her out of the way because she's just still this good, is going to be Future Princess. She's amazing in Arena. She's amazing in Coliseum. The only place that she's not good in is going to be the raids. She's just not great when it comes to actually doing damage. Uh, I think mainly because she doesn't have a combat damage boost on her party skill. And then she also doesn't have a good one for uh, weapon chain skill doesn't actually do damage. I think those are the two reasons why she's not good in raiding even though she has good typing and then there's very difficult bosses that are actually light that you would hope that she can actually do good in. But for literally any part of the content, whether it be the light dungeon, like in the dungeon up here, Tower Horizon, absolutely S tier, S tier in Arena, S tier in Coliseum, S tier in Camazon Zone, and in Orbital Lift. So can't go wrong with her. Um, when it comes to clearing the campaign in Adventure, like I think a lot of people are struggling on in the uh, thing here in this in this chapter. When it comes to 11 part two, um, she's easily one of the S tier characters here. Really helped me clear this out, especially trying to beat the boss here because her typing, her weapon skill, just everything is so good about her when it comes to this. If you're not familiar with her, reason why her weapon skill is so good is because it's in Arena. It's the only weapon skill if you land it the first time, it's gonna actually put him in the down state so you can actually chain skill him. Um, and that's that applies to like every part of content. So that's why it's so good in, as a party leader for Coliseum, it, that's why it's so good in PVE content because it's a massive AOE that once it hits, it's going to put him in a chain skill. Whereas most people's chain skill, you got to do it multiple times for things that matter. So that's why she is so good. And then also she's giving immunity to everyone. She's really tanky. She has a very clean auto attack system. She has good typing when it comes to the people. Like, there's a lot of really good dark characters. She counters them because she's light. Just the list goes on and on. That's why I want to get her out of the way first because I just think she's absolutely incredible. Okay, so then next, here's a character that I really like that is by far one of my favorites and she's still up here. I want to talk about is Lynn. And when it comes to Arena, uh, th this start of this list is going to be Arena focused. Then I'm going to kind of go to Coliseum and then I'm going to be going to more of a raid thing. But a lot of these characters are that I'm going to bring up are going to be characters that are good in everything or very very good they're not just su super pigeonholed into one style of game mode so lynn and i really like lynn main reason now let's actually put her weapon on but fire character so i like that in the the main meta we got a lot of dark and we got a light she just kind of puts herself out of it there's really not too many water characters besides garam and marina that that really mess with her marina's kind of fallen off garam's really squishy and it's kind of a risky character to take into arena so i think she has a really good place in here also she has a really good weapon skill that a really good party buff in the 50 percent melee that it that really synergizes with a lot of the other main meta characters she has she does a ton of damage her auto attacks here inflict injury so you really gotta watch out for that because you can you only get one injury card per account so figuring out which character is actually going to put the negate uh, the injury negation on either their future princess or marina potentially or however you want to do it however you're trying to counter lynn i think most people put it on future princess to be able to to counter her but the fact that she's drawing that much attention in arena is 
is a really big deal. She's just an amazing character, especially when it comes to Arena. And if there's anyone that's going to be a specialist, even though I just talked about how this character or the characters on this list are not going to be so specific, but I think the main reason why she's just an absolute game changer for Arena, in my opinion. So I think she still deserves to be on this list. And she's really good in the raids, which I think for most people don't really care too much because it's such a in-game content, but I really enjoyed the raiding. So she's a good character for that. Fire teams, it's it kind of really, it's hard to get a good fire team. She's going to be the main reason why fire team's good. Also, she works really well in dark teams with Beth as the lead, and then she fills in. You can also switch her out with Eugene, kind of getting off topic, but very good character. Definitely worth going for. I think she got slept on because Future Knight was coming out, and if I had to compare the two, I think she's way better than Future Knight. Unfair that she got completely, uh, you know, the hype was around Future Knight versus her, but I think she's the better character. I think she's really good. Next on, on the list is one that I absolutely do not regret. I, I'm really happy that I uh, fully maxed this character out. I didn't know if I was gonna like her too much, but Gabriel is awesome. She's just such a good character when it comes to, she's, you see her everywhere. I, I would say she's a solid arena character. She's not crazy. She's a solid arena character. She's good as a main character to pilot with her weapon skill, but she's all, also really good as a support character. She's good, in, so solid in arena, amazing in Coliseum, amazing in raids, amazing in, in orbital lift and in Camazon zone. So she's one of those characters right up there, if not better than Future Princess in usability. I think Future Princess obviously is still the most usable character when it comes to this game, raid excluded, even though uh, she's good in raid and good in arena. Future Princess is just on a whole nother level when it comes to what she fills. Like there's just no character that can really feel, come close to like her weapon skill and what she brings to the table. So still Future Princess, best character, but I just trying to show that Gabriel is so useful in all these other game modes. I think she really deserves to get recognition because she's just that good. What I really like about her is I think her weapon, her EX weapon is incredibly important on her because she's one of these characters here that I really like characters just as a rule of thumb, characters like this that have reduced light type resistance or whatever type they are. So she reduces light type resistance. Beth reduces dark type resistance. New character in Mayreal reduces earth type resistance. These characters are awesome. The second you see this, like uh, Nari reduces a defense. Awesome characters. Like once you see that, they're awesome. Just keep that in mind. She has a good, you know, when she being piloted here, I really like her, her weapon skill. I really like that characters like this, that her chain skill procs on everything. So it's just on all instead of, um, yeah, you know, it's a specific thing, like needs to be downed and then like down to injured or whatever. Hers is on all, which is very nice to be able to splash her into a whole bunch of teams that really helps just in general, but especially when it comes to raiding. And she has a combat style party buff when it comes to the crit chance up, so I really like that. It, not so much of a healer though, unless she's mainly being piloted with her weapon skill. I think she's really more of a DPS character. That's how you, in, in improving your DPS, because if you look at her passive here, where it's on uh, Sound of Haven hit, restores HP of party members with the lowest HP by 30% of heal, which is nothing. 30% of, uh, so lowest HP by 30% of heal, but increases attack by 30% for five seconds, activates once every five seconds. So that's good as a, an attack increase. And then her chain skill deals 300% 300, uh, 300 and then restores allies HP by 30% of heal, which is also nothing, but removes all negative effects, which is really good. And then she's increasing everyone's light damage by the 20% reduction. But right here, when it comes to actually being to heal someone this actually heals well which is the sanctuary and then restores allies hp in the sanctuary by 100 percent of heal that's something that's actually really good just keep that in mind if you're taking her don't be disappointed if she's really not healing for you because i don't really think that's what she's for in my opinion she's more of a damage carry slash support style character okay so now we got her a character that deserves to be highlighted it's gonna be noxia i think this character right here is is a very unique in the sense that she's the only character that has a, a summons a pet here. I think, as you've noticed, she's really taken over Arena. She's really taken over Coliseum. She's just a really solid character. The only reason why, if there's any knock against her, in my opinion, is going to be she's absolutely useless when it comes to raiding. She's just like Future Princess in the sense that she has no combat party skill and her weapon skill, such team skill, is not that great. 
So it's just, she's really not going to be good when it comes to raiding. Unlike Future Princess, she actually does damage, I believe, on her weapon skill here. You know, still not going to be useful for raiding. The cool thing about her, though, that's different than Future Princess is that she's really good as a standalone character that you don't need to use her as your main character. So you don't need to use her, her weapon skill. I would say she's significantly better as just a character to plug and play on the side, kind of like how you would take an Ogma, but the passive of just her passively being on your team is going to be such a benefit for your survivability that I think she's just awesome. That's why you see her all over arena. And then the how the AI works for arena, that's why she's so uh, oppressive when it comes to av having to actually face her in arena. You have to not only fight, fight her, but you have to fight her pet. And then you have to fight the AI to make sure you can actually get around it and it doesn't auto target it so they already had an uphill battle because of the disparity going basic to dark but then also they have to deal with uh the auto targeting of this damn pet so it's just a really oppressive matchup gives a whole bunch of yeah so i think she's really good not much more to say about her i think she's good in literally everything except rating is going to be a character that really help your survivability when it comes to orbital lift camazon zone coliseum and arena so very good characters there so next on the list i'm going to add arabelle and reason why is because she was already borderline a very good character but the new buffs to her have made her absolutely incredible when it comes to coliseum and when it comes to rating she's absolutely insane now uh, she wasn't really that popular back then but I, there is some uh, possibility of an all dark team that you can see with noxia her and you know agma uh, that's definitely a possibility that would just never have existed before noxia and before her the buffs to her she's just a really good character i really like this weapon skill here where it bounces around uh, this was the main character i used to go through the campaign and i think she's an amazing carry uh, to take along because this blast that bounces through people i think that's it's just so good especially with her buffs to her damage that i think there's a reason why people are using her if you look at the top ranking like she's one of the few people that are actually good enough to take over uh future princess as the main leader of the team you see her a couple times in here you see garam is another one but i think that speak that alone even though it's not that often future princess is just so good that to see her even in the, the main weapon skill slot like that it just is really shows just how good she is is what i'm trying to say and i've been noticing a ton like especially depending on the bosses you face and the typing of the bosses there's a really good raid team with her as the main damage dealer of it the supporting cast that you see a ton with her a lot of these ranged characters yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it here at the end but she just definitely a very good raid character she was already good but for the most part beth was the leader of a lot of these dark teams but there's this new newer team that she's been the main leader on that does a ton of damage this raid in particular i don't really see that comp being used but last one it was a really strong comp for rating so not only is she really good in coliseum probably okay in arena and then she's going to be useful for you in select versions of like select teams of orbital lift especially if they have a ton of basic characters same with camazon zone so just a really good character and she's good at rating so really wide range of usage for her super good character and then next character absolutely needs to get talked about is going to be nari uh, this character has just been absolutely incredible ever since she ca came out and she still keeps getting used I th she's just a solid character main thing about her is that she is a basic character that does a really good job of beating future princess um when it comes to arena that's one of the few hard counters directly to future princess so it's a really tough matchup like yes there's a lot of type differences between when future princess faces other basic characters but uh, Nari is the one that really nails that matchup. I'm a big fan of like, yes, you could take other like Lin and stuff like that. It's just not even comparable when it comes to how badly she counters Future Princess. But one thing that I think one of the main reasons why she's so good is is how her auto attacks work and how they home in and go through walls and how quickly they attack. Because in this game, it's, it really matters how good the auto attack is, how good, how smooth the animations are. So a lot of stuff you can't see on paper, you have to play the character. Main thing too is going to be on the last shot, decrease enemies range defense by 20 percent that's one of the main reasons why she's so good in so many different areas of the game she's do that adds so much damage to everyone uh, on your team uh let alone herself and she has good typing that it counters such a good character even if she didn't have that benefit there maybe she wouldn't be used so much in coliseum but she's still gonna be an amazing arena character still gonna be good in coliseum maybe not the best but still good because she doesn't do the most amount of defense i think just in this situation where you factor in the defense down and 
the type advantage of a character you know you're going to be facing in Future Princess. For the most part, you know, I would say 95% of the time you're going to be facing Future Princess. So you factor all that in, you're getting a character that is going to bring the best amount of offense to your team for the most part. Like, yes, you know, like on paper, you can see like Garam does more damage or maybe even Future Knight does more damage or Bari does more damage. But based on the meta, Nari does the most damage. And uh, what I like about her, she has a very generic party buff in 50% ranged attack here. So she's really easily splashable with like a Gabriel or whoever you want to bring in the team versus you bring in Garam. Yes, he might technically do more damage, but it's 50% water attack party type. So you're really kind of limiting yourself or you're bringing in Bari here and she's only doing 80% skill, da uh, skill attack. I'd way rather have 50% ranged damage versus 80% skill attack because it's such a niche part of the encounter. So that's why I really like Nori. Anyway, if I was doing this in order, she would definitely be further up here in exact usefulness. I'd probably put her like right here. Maybe, you know, top three at least. I think she's a very good character. So the next couple, two more characters I'm going to talk about that I think deserve to be on the top characters of April 2021. First one is going to be Beth. I still think she's an amazing character. Good in Arena. A lot of light characters now with Gabriel, Future Princess, also facing, uh, you know, another character that's not necessarily a direct counter element wise, but Lynn is a really good character that you know, potentially battling a spot there. You got Noxia. Um, battling a spot there but still really good in arena 50 percent melee attack boost but main things i like about her is her passive here battle instinct which is depending on the number of enemies within three tiles attack increases by 15 percent up to 60 percent and negates incoming damage by 15 percent up to 60 percent that passive plus her on her weapon you need to have the weapon for this it's on dark smash hit decreases dark type resistance by 20 percent for three seconds then generates a shield by 10%. So not only is she doing the 20% uh, resistance that I really like, she's also gaining a shield based on her damage. She's also based on how many enemies you're facing, gaining more attack and more defense. So when it comes to it, she's just a statistical, like just monster. And she does a ton of damage. She has a really hard hitting weapon skill. You just can't see it all on paper. When it comes to, she's useful in literally every part of content. She's super useful in orbital lift, super useful in Camazon zone, arena, Coliseum, raiding, all of it. Uh, she's just absolutely incredible. She's easily one of the most useful characters in this entire game. Just can't say enough about Beth. She's amazing. So then lastly, we have, I want to shout out Mariel here. I think she's a really good character. Yes, she has a very niche passive when it comes to increasing if Bari is in the party, increases damage by 30% of, of damage taken by Bari. So yes, she has that. She has a combat passive, which I really like. She has this right here, where it is on critical hit, increases movement speed by 5% for five seconds and reduces earth type resistance by 5%. So she has that and then it can overlap four times. So it, she has the 20% earth uh, resistance. She has a ton of stats in her weapon here. I don't think that's really relevant. I just think, if you see how she plays, I think she's really amazing in rating. I think she's going to be really solid in Coliseum as well. And you want to combine her with Bari. I think you can probably go double tank Bari her. I think that's going to be a really solid comp there. There's really not any fire teams to have to worry about there. It's just going to be you're facing other future princesses. You're facing other, you know, Noxias and, and Agmas. I really like her, her in Arena. I think she's pretty solid in Arena, mainly when it comes to this. And then lastly, she really takes the Earth team in raiding up to a whole nother level, doing tons of damage. Like I have a, a guy in my guild here doing seven on like, because I don't have a maxed out Rue, so I can't really show this. But on this boss here, let's see if he did a hit. 6.9. He did 7 million on that one, but on level 80 Arena here, did 7 million damage which is absolutely insane it just really speaks to the firepower that's coming from the earth faction now now that they've gotten all of these unique characters yes this is gonna be way down in the future but she's awesome i really like her weapon skill and just how quick it is it's gonna be a two tap but like just how the animation works how the animation works on her weapon here i just want to show this off here because she's kind of newer but i really like how this all works out like how quick that is it's a big aoe um, as you can see here with the reduction, that's that's the earth resistance reduction that's going to really increase the damage of everyone else on the team that has earth effects here. So that's why I want to shout her out because all these characters here in Gabriel, Muriel, and Beth all have these minus 20% uh, reductions. And I think those are going to be characters that you can invest in long term because they're always going to be relevant in some kind of way for a very long time. So I think they're safe investments. And she's by far the most, out of all three of those, I would say she's the most niche. But the character that she's really pairing herself up with is an amazing character in her own right too. So it's really not that big of a deal. 
Depending on how your gotcha luck falls, it might be worth it to pull if you if you already had Ari ready to go. Now that we talked about Maril here, I think there's two more characters that are worth talking for a top 10 list here. I think big one is going to be Future Knight. Future Future Knight, really solid character, kind of unique in the sense that she uh, she's the only character at the moment that has that's a good character that has this weapon skill reduction. The amount of damage she brings. She's a really good main attacker for basic characters, um, pairs well with Nari. Uh, I've been really liking her in raiding, but I think she's really good in Coliseum. I think she's really good in a lot of pretty much every game mode except Arena. I've, I've never really been a fan of Arena. I think she's okay. Facing against her when she's put at the end of the roster versus like future princesses and like a, say like Agma, future princess, and then future knight. It's really tough because it's really hard to time the uh, weapon skill you kind of have in your mind, but weapon skill comes out so much faster so it's one of those things that was like actually facing the character i've never really thought of her as a threat but the weapons the party skill is just so good that sometimes that actually is enough and uh, that still applies in coliseum and other uh, parts of content if anything just the amount of raw damage she brings especially with this uh, the cosmic destroyer she's another character that absolutely needs to have the the main weapon for her to really be useful so you don't have the ex on her and you're disappointed that's probably why but i would say she's a very good character that deserves top 10 status and lastly for top 10 i would say maya maya deserves to be on here because she's she's probably not that great in arena i've seen people use her as just kind of like a meme um has a couple good matchups but not a spectacularly good character when it comes to it because like, you could argue that garam deserves top 10 status but I, I want to say she deserves it over Garen because bringing damage, yes, she he brings a ton of damage to the team, but there's other characters that bring it with different ways that are more versatile and easier to apply to a team that doesn't force you into a water comp. But what makes her invaluable is just she's no one compares to her on healing, so she's absolutely invaluable when it comes to orbital lift and Camazon zone, and also even if you need to triple dip like this. Coliseum. She's still really good in Coliseum. She, yes, she might not be top 100 viable, but she's still an amazing character for Coliseum that you could stick there. When it comes to these other game modes, no one compares to her on a healing perspective. Definitely a character that you're going to want to, if you have her and you can invest in her, I don't think you're going to regret it. Only other thing, uh, one thing I do want to say though, is she's probably not that great in raiding. If you have a team that just dies, I'd like to throw her in that it's like, okay, this is not an optimal team. I get by with it, but all the best raiding comps don't have her in the, in the party. She just doesn't really do that much damage. So she's not a really good raiding character, but so not okay arena, really good Coliseum, really good. Uh, the other PVE parts of content, but not necessarily raiding or arena. So I think she deserves top 10, but she's right there at the, the bottom there, but she still provides something that no other character really provides. So, all right, guys, well, that's my list for April here. Top 10 characters here in Guardian Tales. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you have any insights you want to add yourself. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want more Guardian Tales content. Also, like the video if you found it helpful. Lastly, link in the description for the Discord if you want to join an active Discord regarding Guardian Tales. And with that, guys, I am out. Peace.